Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in again on our platform of Bella. Uh, we're so happy to be here today with Erica from La Diosa Boutique. Hi, Erica. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good, good. And it's so funny. I was, we were telling, or I was telling Erica earlier that when we talked, I said, I wanted to call her La Diosa, just like her <laughs> boutique name, you know, but it's Erica. <laughs> yeah, you can call me either or I, I'll respond to both. <laughs> At home, sometimes they call me La Diosa. <laughs> And I love that. So thank you so much for joining us. We're happy to be here. We're really excited about hearing about your story. But yeah, really is a platform where we want to elevate the Latina entrepreneurial voice. And our focus is in our communities of South LA and East LA. I feel like that's an opportunity for us to really elevate Latinas and all the amazing, incredible work you all are doing as entrepreneurs. So thank you so much for taking some time to share your story with us. Um, and we'll just kind of start. I just want to, you know, if you can introduce yourself to those that are listening, just tell us a little bit about you, who is Erica, and then maybe a little bit about your business as well. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I know it's been a while since we're trying to get this interview, but, you know, um, well, I'm Erica. Uh, I'm 26 years old. I am a mom, a wife, um, you know, a sister, Um I do have I do work full time for a nonprofit. So, you know, I'm trying to run my business all well. So trying to get my career going and trying to balance off life and, and whatnot. So you can imagine it's just been so busy and I'm still trying to travel and, you know, just do everything all at once. Um, so that's been kind of fun. So I that's been, you know, it's been a while. It, it did take us a bit to to get this interview. But thank you for having me. I, I appreciate it. Um, so what, what was the other question? <laughs> yeah, La Diosa Boutique. So how did you, um, like, how did you get started? Actually, maybe we could start there. Like, how did you get started? How did the con concept come about? So you have your full-time job, but you decided to venture into this, you know, the small business world, like starting your business, like what was your inspiration and how did you come up with the concept and start your business? Yeah, so actually, well, I, I had another business prior to La Diosa. I was flipping uh, like Amazon pallets and Target pallets, like all the furniture, I'd buy them. And then I'd go out on OfferUp and Facebook and then, you know, just flip them. Mm -hmm. um, and it was nice and fun. Uh, it was very hard work. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, the, the revenue was there. It was fun, but I just felt disconnected from my product. I didn't feel like I was, you know, kind of like, I mean, I was basically just doing it for the money. I wasn't having like fun with that. And I knew I wanted something more that I can, you know, connect with my product and, and um, just like really be proud of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I knew I wanted to include my culture in it. I just didn't know like what or, you know, how to do it. Um, so I, around December my family ended up getting COVID and I didn't get you know any more pallets and I wasn't selling any more of my product like on OfferUp and Facebook because we had COVID of course we didn't want to risk any of that and during that time it, it just stopped and um but that's where I was kind of starting to work and starting to tell others like you know I want to do something else I want to do something else mm -hmm. and I remember just going to uh, Tijuana with my sister with the intention of looking for you know products uh, that didn't end up going the way I planned it or, you know, we just didn't find anything. We didn't know who to ask or where to go. Mm -hmm. um, but when I went there, I, we ended up uh, seeing like cats, like the, the, the gorras that are pintadas. And um, I just remember thinking like, oh my God, if I can get those hats, you know, um, I'm sure like people will love them because that's something that I've always um, really admired. I really, really just like loved how broad how bright they are sorry and um yeah so the idea was there I was kind of like okay I kind of know what I want now um and then I ended up getting a trip to Cancun with some girlfriends and from there I went to Guadalajara also with the intent with, to visit family but with the intention of looking like just really you know uh, looking for a vendor mm -hmm. I wanted it directly from the artist I didn't want to you know um have to like have a third party involved mm. uh so I went to Guadalajara 
and you know I was telling my Theo what my ideas were and what I wanted and I remember him looking at me and was like are you crazy like you're that's not gonna sell like over here people don't buy those type of things like you know like you're eating uh, at a restaurant and they bring those things to you and you're just kind of like Mm -hmm. no thanks you know so I was like man like what if he's right um but anyway I still kept you know because I was like I know for me like I love those things like I appreciate it more I take care of like the little you know artesanias like I'm just like oh my god like someone worked really hard to make this yeah um so yeah we just asked around I I I remember uh, getting into Uber with a friend and you know I was just telling them like what I wanted and he was like oh you should go here um you'd probably find a vendor like a good vendor there so yeah I ended up going to a plaza and it was um like full of of like vendor like like a little pop-up full mm-hmm. of like um artesanias and like you know all er- everything was there everything that I could ever imagine uh, so I went around just buying a lot of uh, little artesanias and things that were that I would be okay, you know, to keep. But I was also kind of doing it as a, I'm going to try to sell it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I purchased a lot of things. I posted it on my Instagram and Facebook. Um, and I just, you know, let them know that it was for sale. And by the end of that, of the day, uh, all of my um, stuff was sold out. So all of my little oh. earrings, all of the hats, all of the jewelry, everything was sold out. Um, so then I had to go back the next day, which was a Sunday and look for, you know, maybe get more product and Mm -hmm. this time get the vendors information. Um, a lot of them were, a lot of the vendors were like, no, like, you know, we don't, we don't ship to the U S or we don't know how to ship to the U S or they were just kind of like, not really into it. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we came across that problem. Um, but we, I, ended up getting a, a few vendors like their their whatsapp mm-hmm. um and then we you know after that it was like okay like let's agree to be partners how do we do this you know yeah <laughs> so uh I didn't like I didn't have a plan like I didn't know how to send money to Mexico or how to open a bank account because what the one they, some of them didn't even have bank accounts or you know mm-hmm. um so we had to figure that out but I was like, well, I'll figure it out when I'm over there. And I just, and I ended up just, you know, buying everything that I was like, okay, I'm going to sell. So by the time that I was on my way back to the, to, to the U.S., all of my stuff was already had an owner. Um, like I had waraches, uh-huh. I had hats, I had, you know, artesanias. I had to buy a whole other maleta so I can bring all of these things. <laughs> <over>. <laughs> so that was funny. You can imagine me just, you know, pulling a big old maleta to the U.S. So yeah, when we got up, when we got back to um, the U.S., I was just making all of the, the deliveries and I was like, okay, like this, this is a, this is a good sign. Like this, this is my sign that it's, it's going to, it's, I'm going to do good here. And thankfully it's been, you know, amazing. I did get the, I, I um, got one of the vendors with his name is uh, Santos and he's in charge of uh, painting the hats like the sombreros and, and stuff. So he, he, um, he agreed to, you know, be partners and, and he paint them for me and, and ship them. The issue was just that, you know, he didn't have a bank account. Mm-hmm. He didn't have an ID. He didn't have, um, you know, anything or just really have an idea of how to ship or where to go to ship. So mm-hmm. we had to just figure all of that out. Um, thankfully I mean it was it took us like two or three weeks to you know get his ID open a bank account or just like learn how to send the money over and it was kind of like scary because you know I was like he can scam me and there's nothing that I can do like I'm gonna be sending him you know a lot of money and he can just walk away and there's nothing that I can do so I always had that in the back of my mind but I was like well it's a risk (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I have to take it. Um, so we ended up figuring that all out, thank God. Um, and then we ran into the issue that we, you know, I was selling a lot of like the hats and the artesanias, but you know, I was selling it more than what he could produce. Mm. So then we had to get another vendor. Uh, so yeah, thank God. Um, we had to figure out, you know, how to manage like the shipping and, and whatnot. 
So then we got um, another one who, and she's in charge of uh, like the jewelry, Mm -hmm. all the little accessories. And, you know, she does an amazing job and, you know, very sweet. So we're always like in contact through WhatsApp and I'm always just making sure that they're, you know, okay with um, their their time and and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Wow, that's a, that's an amazing story. I think just hearing <clears throat> from like concept to implementation, like as you are today, right? And I think this is why it's so amazing to hear uh, the stories of emprendedoras like you that we what we see is like the final product, right? Yeah. Like I met you at the Goddess Mercado, you had your pop-up, it all looks so great. And yet we all know there's a story behind that, right? So you're sharing kind of like when you started with this idea wasn't necessarily encouraged from some of your family, but you kept pushing through. Now you're supporting other vendors, right? That are, that you're partnering with. So it's like, that's your team and you have a team behind you and, and you have this and you're doing really well. And so it's just really amazing and encouraging to hear that story and to, uh, to know that, you know, it did take time. There was bumps along the road, but you kept pushing through. You believed in your product. You believed in yourself and you, you loved it to your point earlier, you had that connection to your product, right. Which is really important. So that's really neat. Thank you so much for sharing that. I learned so much. Um, and so did you, when you were like growing up, I kind of want to go back to like, take a step back into your childhood a little bit, like as you were growing up, like what kind of person was Erica like how how were you were you always kind of that you know like boss girl like you know I'm gonna be an emperadora when I get older you know or like how was it growing up for you yeah so I am originally from Compton California I grew up there my entire life my mom still lives there I'm I'm in South LA now Mm -hmm. um but yeah like I you know I'm I'm the middle child of five so according to my siblings I was a spoiled one (laughs) Uh, <laughs> uh, but I think I've always been, you know, <laughs> I just remember it now, but I've always been very like a hustler, I guess. In high school, um, we had the option. Well, we had to, yeah, we got an opportunity to go to Spain. And obviously, you know, my mom was, a, a, um, we did, she, she didn't have the funds to just pull out, you know, two or $3,000 and was like, hey, yeah, go to Spain, obviously. Um, so I, you know, started selling chips and juices in high school. And even though that wasn't allowed, you know, we, I got caught a few times, but I don't. <laughs> and I remember my mom, she ended up getting her taxes and she gave me, she gave each one of us a hundred dollars. Wow. And of course, you know, uh, we're young, we're like, oh, let's go spend it. And I was like, I'm going to flip these, uh, this a hundred dollar bill. And I went to go buy, you know, chips from uh, Smart and Final, some chocolates and Capri Suns. And uh, like, I was, you know, making like $80 a day. So I was like, huh, like if I keep this up, you know, five days um, a week, like I'll be good. Like I can go to Spain. (laughs) Oh my gosh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so (laughs) I think now I I just had that memory right now. But um, also like my mom, um, she like, she used to work at cleaning hotel rooms Mm -hmm. and we grew up doing that too. Mm-hmm. So uh, by high school, like on the weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays, um, I'd go work to clean the hotel room. So it was just me, you know, cleaning the rooms all by myself mm-hmm. and getting paid maybe like 50 bucks for f- like five hours, which yeah. was to me, it was a lot that was like, oh, like that's 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, that's and now I'm like, hey, like <laughs> <laughs> robbing me. Someone's ripping me off. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it was because I wanted to go to Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you know, it's, it, it was now that I'm like looking back at it, I was like, man, like we were hustlers. I was a hustler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's, it. that's really exciting to hear, like to have you go back and re- relive that because what happens is I, I, when I ask this question, I, I hear a lot of that. You see like signs early on that, you know, no one's going to necessarily know, like, yeah, I'm going to be a business owner. Like when I grow up or the seed, but you know, but you have some of those, like, those skills, that passion, that drive, right? And then you, there's examples in your childhood where you were already thinking about like, how can my money work for me? How am I gonna build wealth? How am I gonna reach that goal of going to Spain? You know, so I think all of that is is really interesting and and how like now I think like how what keeps you going too, right? Like when you hit those road bumps, 
maybe that those experiences growing up taught you to be more resilient, more strong, more like, okay, I'm not going to give up, you know, kind of thing. So that's really awesome. And um, do you have like, actually, I'll ask this a different way. So what comes next for La Diosa Boutique? Like, what's your vision? Like, do you have, do you see growth? Do you see any sort of change coming? Are you happy with how things are? Like what's coming up next for you? Yeah. So it's been, it's been a tough, um, it's been a tough, uh, like just being able to balance work and life. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, when I started it, like I just gave it my all. Mm -hmm. I feel like I just, because when I started, I actually started my new position that I have now at, at in a nonprofit that's you know helping with affordable housing mm -hmm. and I was kind of like okay like you know I'm gonna give it all to both yeah and um like the, I started with the pop-ups um with do, doing like the videos like every weekend and in a way I was kind of like burning myself out because during the mm -hmm. week I mean I was working from home but I was like you know just work like doing my mom you know wife duties at yeah. home during the week and then on weekends doing la diosa um doing the pop-ups and, and selling so it was like burning myself out you know mm -hmm. um so I just really learned to just only do like certain weekends mm -hmm. um it, it's n not as I as often as I wish it would it could be Mm -hmm. But I think that's in order for me to like keep myself sane and making sure that I'm balancing off, um, you know, being a mom and a wife and, and making sure that I'm taking care of myself and mm -hmm. that like giving myself enough time to like, you know, travel if I want to or go have dinner with friends or, or just have fun for myself. Mm -hmm. um, so as for now, I think everything's okay. Like everything's just gonna stay as only a few pop-ups a month um like that I mean it does hurt inside because I'm like okay like at first it was like we're giving it our all and then we were having like shipments from um Guadalajara over to us like almost every week and now it's like am I failing them am I like are they like wondering why isn't she ordering as much mm -hmm. um so you know, I'm still kind of like, do I want to like chase that mm -hmm. dream or do I want to like stay and grow in my career mm -hmm. um, and just make sure that I'm like providing for my child and, and you know, for, for my future. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still kind of like figuring that out at today. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that's okay. I think definitely there's so much like balance and integration with life and our, you know, your, your health and well being is so important because you can't do any of this if you're not right. If you're not okay. So I think that the, the journey of like a business owner is there's like it's hills and valleys as we say, right? Like there's up, there's downs, there's pivots, there's pauses, you know, everything in between. And I think the only person that can decide that is you, you know, you have the power to decide how slow, how fast, where you turn left or right. And so I just want to encourage you to just listen to your gut and your heart and keep doing what, what you feel is right for you at this time, which it may be this now and maybe next year it might look different. Right. And so I think that uh, what you're doing is just amazing work. And so on that note, and kind of what you shared um, what would you, what like advice or words of wisdom would you give to other Latina entrepreneurs that are either just starting out or maybe thinking about starting their business? Um, I would just say, do it. Like if it's something that you're like thinking about, just, you know, do it, like go for it, um, look for vendors, um, you know, talk to other, um, like, uh, people who are already doing it or who, who've done it. Um, you know, network, that's important. I, you know, I have good advice that I'm just like, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for their advice or for their help. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously having a good support system. You know, my family has helped me so much. My husband, like, lets me borrow his uh, his company truck that helps me <laughs> just load everything up for the, like the pop-ups. Uh, you know, they've helped me like, pack up or just unpack and they're always like there for my pop-ups so you know just having a good support system and you know without family like I wouldn't I, I'm sure I wouldn't have been able to do this because they they're the ones taking care of my son while I'm like doing the pop-ups or 
you know, just doing like little things that I, it's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, just like really talking to others who, who, who are doing this. Um, you know, I've had people ask me like, how did I get my vendors or who are my, my vendors? And I'm more than happy to share that. Like I eat more, you know, better for, for them, better for, for my vendors. Um, it is a lot of work. It's, you know, <laughs> like you said, there's ups and downs. And honestly, with this business, like I've been at my highest, I've been at my lowest, like there's just days where I'm like, do I want to continue this? Like, why am I doing this? Like, this is not what I thought it was going to be like. I thought it was just going to be like, you know, sell, sell, sell. <laughs> and it's not like that. Like, there's a lot of um, marketing. You're, you know, you're doing everything on your own. You're doing the whole shipping. You're all the research. You're investing in, you know, the first few, a couple of months are not going to be, um, like, just, yeah, the sales is basically going to go back into what you invested. Mm -hmm. um and I wish I knew that I thought it was just gonna be like okay you know <laughs> where's my money <laughs> um, but it's I mean it's been fun like it's it's kind of like a hobby you know yeah um and, and just for me it's like watching people like react to my product mm -hmm. like to like the artesanias and they're just like oh my god like they're so beautiful or, you know just the hats or just coming in to smell the shoes the huaraches and <laughs> Like they always tell me like it takes me back to Mexico and I feel like you know that's like mm -hmm. it's nice for me like that's my heart just warms up a little bit yes um but just you know having a passion for for your product and and like sharing your story like on my our little cards we have you know a picture of Santos and him painting the hats mm -hmm. um and you know eventually we're gonna add Liz um or the, the one that makes her jewelry mm -hmm. but you know that just really warms my heart and I'm sure like other people like really appreciate that story too because it's not just like hey we're here for the money because you know it, it takes time to get revenue back so yeah, definitely I yeah. love that those are such great words of wisdom great words to kind of leave everyone with um and my my last kind of question is you know is there anything that maybe we didn't cover in the in this interview or anything that you want to share um any last like tips or anything like that because I think what what you shared on on the wisdom all of that all of that is important and I know you're going to inspire so many those that are watching uh specifically this interview but you know just you in general sharing your story there's so much to learn and and just remind you know women that it's okay but it's also not an easy journey and so there are people out there who, who want to see everyone be successful in their business. So any kind of last um, comments you want to share before we close the interview? Yeah, if it's, I mean, like I said, if, if there's, you know, just a small, like little idea or just a small, like, oh, should I do that? Yeah, do it. You know, like I always tell my friends, like, what do you want? Like, what, just take something, like take your passion, just something small, even if it's, makeup it doesn't matter if someone else is doing it you know like you you're your own person you're gonna do you're gonna do it different like there's other um, I see other people selling the same like guaraches and artesanias but it's just so different you know it's not the same like I'm, I'll support them and they support me like uh just starting off the business like you're gonna meet so many I've grown so much if you see the person that I was um, you know, a year ago, like she's a completely different person. I don't even, you know, identify as her anymore because mm -hmm. it's taught me a lot of discipline. It's taught me, um, you know, how to manage my finances. It's taught me like how to balance off my time, how to, you know, make sure that I'm doing my wife duties, my mom duties, uh, work duties, uh, la diosa duties, you know, making like like who is she I don't know <laughs> before I wouldn't even cook like I wouldn't I didn't have a calendar I didn't have none of that and now it's like I you know I have at home I have like probably five calendars like you know this is what I have to do with for work this is what I have to do for home this is what I have to do um on the weekends and you know making sure that I'm scheduling time for my husband too because I know he feels or he, he felt like I wasn't giving him enough attention um so it's just like making sure that I'm, um, uh, we're, we're scheduling date nights and we're scheduling family time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really taught me a lot and I've grown so much. I've grown so much confidence. I've been able to work, network with other Latina women. 
um, that I'm, I just admire. And, and, you know, there's been times where we, after pop-ups, we've been to like lunch um, together and we're just like, oh, like, how did you do in this pop-up? And it's just nice to be able to talk to um, like other entrepreneur Latina women. Yeah. Um, so, and, and it's just, it's, it's a whole different world. It's, it really is. Um, and, and I'm happy I did it. I did it and I do it again. Yeah. With, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, Erica, so much for sharing your story and your your tips and encouragement. I know are going to mean a lot to those that are listening. And so we want to encourage everyone who is listening to support Erica, La Diosa Boutique. We're going to make sure to include her Instagram handle and how to contact her on the website with this video. Uh, but Erica, thank you so much. You inspired me. I just feel my heart is full and <laughs> hearing your story. I really mean that. Thank you so much. And I look forward to staying connected with you also. And just a shout out to all the Latina emprendedoras out there. You guys are, you gals are doing such yeah. great work. So keep it up. We love you. And we'll say goodbye for now. So adelante comunidad. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.